Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 10 of Let's Play Terraria. Now, you might be wondering why in the world I'm starting it in the jungle. Well, uh, the thing is, I have been trying to get turtle shells here, uh, off screen, for an hour and a half now, honestly, and I haven't gotten a single one, so uh, I've been trying to do that, but um, as you can see off to the... Uh, off to the right there, uh, a Martian probe has spawned. Now, the Martian Madness event is something that I have needed to do for a, you know, a while anyway. Well, I say I needed to do it for a while. Uh, what I really mean to say is I need to do it right now, basically, in this stage of my character's development. So, um... <coughs> So, uh, yeah, I'm going to let this thing see me, and then we're going to do the Martian Madness event. And then after that, I will probably come back here and do some, uh, some more farming off-screen and whatnot, and I'll just jump cut all that. So anyways, here we go. Martian probe sees me. The Martians are invading. I go back to base. And I fight them. Ah, it's above me. Sweet. And now for the difficult part. Gotcha! Yeah, I got it. Xeno Popper. Gotcha. Influx Waver. Yay, Cosmic Car Key, finally. Okay, so, now that I have my turtle armor, it is time for me to battle the golem, and in order to do that, I have to get, or I have to make, anyway, a golem arena, so I'm going to do that over on this side of my base. Okay, so this is my basic golem arena. Um, I'm going to eventually put a heart lantern down here, but anyways... Uh, basically, when you don't have any kind of sky raining thing like the blizzard staff or uh, the lunar flare, which is in-game shit, um, when you don't have those kinds of things, then you have to summon it manually and stay in the box. But if you do, you can hook down here and then put your cursor over this thing and then summon it and then just constantly fire it. 
If you're using the Lunar Flare, it'll actually be a lot better to do that, do it that way because the Golem will be killed super quickly, and you can, uh, you can pretty much keep summoning him and summoning him, and eventually, you know, you'll get a you'll get a lot of money. So, uh, money isn't why I'm doing this right now. So, hopefully, I'll be able to do this without dying. Oh yeah, no problem. Okay, hopefully no problem. With any luck, no problem. Okay. And that is one. That's two. Okay, so my next order of business is to create a <coughs> is to create a Moon Lord Arena, and then hopefully uh, battle the Moon Lord this episode. So, yeah. So actually, we're nearing the end of the season because uh, once I get everything I need from the Moon Lord, I want to end the season and then start a new season, and. Uh, then I'm going to play with mods and whatnot. So I think first I'm going to be playing with the Calamity mod. Um, so uh, if you like watching Calamity mod content, then you have that to look forward to. So, anyways, um, yeah. So that's on the agenda. Now before all of you start commenting, hey, this is an old arena design, I am actually aware of this. Um, I have taken a look at the newer ones. Um, honestly though, uh, I'm going to use what works, what I know for a fact works, because I haven't actually tried the newer arenas, I haven't had a chance to. Uh, most of them use bubble blocks, and uh, on console, the bubble blocks are kind of screwy because they act as regular blocks instead of background walls like they do on this version. So I'm not going to use bubble blocks, basically. Instead, I'm just going to use this kind of thing, and uh, that'll be that. <laughs> I need some torches for a campfire, so... Well, I need two campfires, but that's all right. I already mapped my buttons, so... Four... I don't know how many torches I need. <laughs> oh. Four. <laughs> that works. One right there. One right here. I need to come over here and grab my honey bucket of oats. No, not of oats. Just a honey bucket. And then I need to grab my golden chest, because that's what's going in the middle, and let me see, a heart lantern, which is in here. And now I can finish the arena, completely. And actually, I, may want, I might want to make two heart lanterns, just because of, you know, I like things to be somewhat symmetrical. I mean, it's not too important, but as long as it doesn't screw me over, then I'm pretty much good. Alright. <clears throat> There's that. And then my yo-yo bag is going in here, but that's for much later. Um, let's see, I have my paladin's shield in my inventory, so that's good. Along with my cross necklace. Uh, I need my charm of myths, which is over here. And I'm also going to need another heart lantern, so let me see if I have any hearts somewhere. I 
I don't think I do. I don't. Which means I need to go and get one more Heart Lantern. Like I said, though, it's not imperative. I just prefer it that way. Anyways, Charm of Myths goes in here. And then the last thing I need is a pair of Flesh Knuckles, which I will get a little bit later. Okay, so let me make the honey in here. I want to zoom in for this. <laughs> Mainly because that just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, there we go. That was weird. Yeah, okay, I thought it would make it easier. Turns out it actually zooms the cursor speed, too. That's a little annoying. Alright, five ought to do it. Yep, that'll do it. And zoom out. <coughs> In case you're wondering how I'm doing that, um, if you don't know, the plus and minus buttons will uh, allow you to zoom it, so that's basically how. <laughs> now I have no idea if this will work above ground or not, but I'm going to try it. And it does. Excellent. Flesh Knuckles, first try. Alrighty then. Alright, gotta put these in here. Okay. Let's see here. I've got my Moon Lord Arena set up. Uh, for the most part. Um, I'm gonna place a couple torches here. And I think that's about it. Anyways, so I got my Moon Wave Arena set up, and uh, everything is good as far as that goes. Ah, oh, they're throwing a party. Excellent. Now, all I need to do is defeat the Lunatic Cultist, trigger the Celestial Events, and then defeat all four pillars, and then I'll be back here to do this. This ought to be fun. No, don't throw that away. I need to equip that. And then with any luck, survive. Because I'm about dead.
You're not summoning your dragon protector, damn it. <laughs> you almost tricked me with that one. Gotcha. If you're unaware of how the Crawltipede works, basically it is patrolling the skies, making sure that you stay on the ground. So as long as you stay on the ground, you're pretty much good to go. The Crawltipede, I think, does the highest damage out of any enemy in the Solar Pillar. So, like I said, most of the time, if you stay on the ground, you're pretty much good to go. <coughs> that having been said, however, the Crawltipede is not a flawless enemy you can actually defeat it rather easily. <coughs> but mainly it's if you go, like if you do a certain thing and you like get inside of its uh, damage radius then you can be safe as long as you uh, move very slowly and whatnot, but I'm not going to uh, demonstrate that because it's actually very difficult to do. So. You know what? I think this is the very first time I have taken on the uh, Celestial event in a Let's Play. Huh. I didn't even think about that till just now. No, you don't, Crawl to <laughs> Knowing all that you can about uh, about the enemies during, like with the pillars, um, it really helps a lot. So yeah, <laughs> especially with the solar pillar because it's the hardest pillar if you're a mage. Will you stop that Corite? Damn. God almighty, the Celestial Pillars look so damn good. <laughs> I have no idea when they updated the textures, but they definitely don't look like this on console. So... Come on, there you go. All right, I've got my solar fragments. Now for the Stardust Pillar, it's actually best if you uh, if you do this to uh, one of the star cells and then lead them away. 
and then just, you know, create more star cells as you go. This will actually allow you to uh, monitor the progress of the shield by uh, by checking to see whether or not the um, the red lines go back, you know, to where the sh to where the pillar is. It allows you to monitor that and stay completely out of danger. So this is actually a very good way of taking down the uh, Stardust pillar. And it actually doesn't take too long either doing it this way. As long as you don't destroy all of them. <laughs> now, if you don't know how these things work, Basically, when you destroy one, only the adults will uh, will diminish the pillar's shield. So, the smaller ones, when they're recharging, they won't. But the ones that are fully grown, like those, will. So, uh, if you destroy them while they're fully grown, then they will diminish the shield. Otherwise, they won't. And that actually might be it. Nope. Not yet. Anyways, I just wanted to show that off, so I'm actually going to go ahead and kill all these and then go to actually destroy the thing, so, because I think the shield is down. Yeah, it does. Where are you, pillar? There you are. The next time I fight this thing, I will not use the uh, the cheese strat, basically. I won't lead a star cell away and do all that. I'll actually fight it legitimately. Stardust Fragments. The Nebula Pillar. The Nebula Pillar can be a pain in the ass if you're uh, not ready for it. <clears throat> Although it is one of the easiest... Uh, it is really one of the easiest pillars. God, it looks so fucking pretty, I swear. I feel like I do have to mention that uh, if you're using a mount during a couple of these pillars, like the UFO mount like I do, uh, and you get hit by one of their projectile attacks, it has a chance of, at least on console anyway, it has a chance of demounting you. So that's something to keep in mind. And I don't know why it does that on console, but I figured I might mention it just in case it also does that on PC. So yeah. I don't actually know that it does, but yeah. <laughs> just in case you've experienced that, then that's why. Now keep in mind, I'm actually battling this thing with a pair of steampunk wings, which you can purchase for one platinum. 
and uh, once you build a golem farm, you can get platinum really easily, so yeah, there's that. Die, Evolution Beast. No, my bad. That was, uh... Actually, I don't remember what those ones are called. Hold on, what are you called? Oh, a Predictor. That's right. Duh. <laughs> I used to know the names of all of the enemies in all of the pillars, but without playing the game for, you know, a long time, I actually forgot it, so... <laughs> And the Nebula Pillar is down. Now the reason this one's a pain in the ass is more so because of a debuff that some of these things can give you. Specifically, the Alien Queens give it to you. But um, if they shoot you with their... The Alien Queens, if they shoot you with that projectile they're shooting... Which I know it's a little bit hard to see, but I'll try to zoom in on it in post. But anyways, if they shoot you with that, then you... Uh, you get a debuff... I think that's called Strange Gravity or something like that. And uh, there it goes. It does that. <laughs> I have absolutely no control over where I'm going other than left and right. So the up and down movement is entirely the debuff. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and check it. Distorted. That's what it is. It's gravity distortion. So, yeah. I knew it had something to do with gravity, so I was close. <laughs> Ah, it happened again. But anyways, yeah, these things have a tendency to do that. Which, that's why it's a pain in the ass, really. Ew. The Vortex Pillar's aesthetic is one of my favorite ones out of all the pillars. Um, especially with the pickaxe because it's like, you know, it looks really cool. And you'll see what I mean as soon as I make it because I am going to make a Vortex pickaxe. Unfortunately though, that will come much later.
No, go down! Down, damn it! This is why the distortion debuff is a pain in the ass, to say the least. Will you stop going up? Jeez! <laughs> I went like into outer space with that one. <laughs> you are not hitting me with that shit again. Uh, you can forget about it. And that is all four pillars down. Defeated. Final boss in the game without mods, and it's down. And I got a awesome drop for it, so there's that. Okay, so, um, first order of business, craft a better set of wings. So, I'm gonna be doing the best set of wings in the game, aka okay, solar rings. Unless I don't have enough solar fragments, I don't. Okay, I'll make more. Yeah, I can only make four, okay. That looks like we're gonna have to do it all again. Now hopefully I can make solar wings, yes, thank god. I will replace these things. One vortex pickaxe to replace my ham, uh, ham saw. 
Pixel. <laughs> and one Vortex Ham Axe to replace my Spectre Ham Axe. Goodbye, Pixel. I knew thee well. I think I'm going to end this video. Uh, if you liked what you watched and you want to see more of this kind of stuff, then please subscribe. And uh, I will see you in the next episode, which will be the finale. And I may or may not record it today because I cannot wait to get to Season 4. So, thank you all for watching.